Yeah, I'm always shooting down in the woods. Hickok 45, your internet shooting companion, coming to you from the beautiful hills of Middle Tennessee. Tennessee, the home of Dolly Parton, Alvin York, Davy Crockett, many, many other fine individuals, and a few lowlifes, right? You got them, we got them. <laughs> so here I am, shooting the breeze number seven, I think. Don't hold me to it, but I'll figure it out. I believe this is the seventh time I've come to you in this format. Now I'm in a different location. You know, I uh, decided I needed to yak at you a little bit. And uh, uh, I looked at my reloading room and every time I go two or three weeks without doing this, uh, it gets cluttered and uh, uh, I think I'll just do it in the house. I'll just take the tripod into the house and we'll sit in the kitchen. How's that? Uh, you know, right here, kind of where I live, have lived for the last 30 years. Ever since I built this log cabin with my bare hands, speaking of Davy Crockett. <laughs> no, I didn't build it with my bare hands, but uh, I have lived here, you know, with my bare hands for a long time. And uh, so anyway, I thought I'd just chat with you. And before we get too far, let me put this away. This, I mean, this is 38 Special, nice, boring gun to some people, but oh man, if you saw the video, the latest Model 10, Chapter 2, you know, they are great little shooters. So I had that out in the uh, shed cleaning on it. So I uh, just had it back here handy. Uh, not locked up yet. But uh, what was I going to say? Oh, you don't remember? I'm going to try to keep track of time here. Uh, use my phone. But meet and greet. Yeah, we had kind of a, uh, not a surprise, well, I can not only call it a surprise meet and greet coming up. Uh, I will say tomorrow. Okay, I've been meaning to do uh, Shooting the Breeze 7, I think, that whatever the next one is, whatever this one is, uh, this week. And I thought, you know, we got this meet and greet surprise, meet and greet coming up tomorrow that we just put together uh, in the last few days. So I'll just go ahead and maybe I'll get this posted but before the meet and greet. Maybe not. So either way, you'll know because the meet and greet is Saturday, tomorrow the 21st, I think, of November. Yeah, what year is it? What planet are we on? Yeah, 21st from 11 to 2, 1 o'clock uh, in Greenville, Kentucky. I know all of you will be there, right? Um, it's at uh, Uncle Lee's. Okay, it's a gun shop, sporting goods store that's been there forever. Forever. They went out of business uh, back, I think, six or eight months ago. Bud's uh, bought it and reopened it under the same name, basically. So it's kind of neat. And uh, I told uh, the folks at Bud's, whenever it gets rolling, you know, we'd be glad to come up and do a meet and greet. Uh, we have lots of viewers in Kentucky, even though I make fun of you and you folks in Kentucky. I'm from Kentucky, I'm a Kentuckian. I still have occasionally somebody will remark, are you able to drive into Kentucky? Uh, people hate you up there. <laughs> uh, new people who don't get the joke. Um, but yeah, I'm from Kentucky and anyway, I, and I was not really familiar with that shop. It's, uh, in Greenville. I, I don't make it to Greenville, Kentucky, really. I, I'm glad to find it. Drove up there the other day and a nice place, big shop. And, uh, the folks around there love that shop. So it's fortunate if you have a good gun shop in your neighborhood, isn't it? And boy, you hate to see it go away. So anyway, uh, so we're going to be up there uh, tomorrow. And uh, that's probably today for many of you, if I get this posted. Uh, I'm left to my own, uh, <laughs> my own, <laughs> my own skills in terms of the shooting the breezes. And I, I have so far been able to uh, render them properly and everything, post them. But uh, if I get it posted in time, rendered in time, if I don't talk too long, so it doesn't take 12 hours to render and post. Uh, you might actually see this before the meet and greet. So anyway, I know it mainly applies to people up in Kentucky anyway. Uh, although I do expect a few of you to drive in from North Dakota in California. So, you know, if you got on the road right now, you might make it, get a, an airline flight, you know, you could get there. So anyway, it'll be up there. And I hope to see a lot of you. If, if, uh, if it's in the past when you see this, I hope I did see a lot of you. Okay, we put a posting on Facebook about it, and uh, hopefully uh, you saw that in time. If you live anywhere close, so I wanted to mention that. 
so the meet and greet. Uh, if, what have we been up to? Gosh, I don't know what I've been up to. Been shooting a fair amount and have uh, been fortunate to shoot some interesting firearms. You've seen some of those posted already and uh, maybe some have not been posted yet. But uh, again, it's one of the, the benefits of being me these days. You know, I fully acknowledge and confess to that. Uh, somebody today in a comment said something about I'm the luckiest man in the world. And I said, yes, I agree. Yeah, I mean, again, you know, if you have a favorite hobby, now the shooting is not all I do. It's not all I think about. But if if you have a, a favorite hobby, something that is your, you know, your just favorite thing to do when you have time, whatever it is, maybe fishing, you know, golfing, uh, think about it, you know, whether reading good books, whatever it is that you that you do a lot of, maybe it's travel, you know, most of us have some sort of uh, hobby, uh, avocation, something you know, we just love to do, making pottery or whatever it is. And, and so it's obviously cool when you can do that full time, you know, as long as you don't get burned out on it, you know, you, you know, sometimes uh, a hobby is really inviting because it is a hobby and you get to spend yeah, a couple, three hours a week doing it. So you have to be careful of that too, don't you? I've known people who were really avid shooters and they opened up a gun shop. The reason that most of them I got to know after they opened the gun shop, that's how I got to know them, you know, you know me, hang out in gun shops all the time. And uh, I mean, so many of them talk about how they used to shoot a lot and compete some and everything, but they got into the retail business of, of the firearms business. They don't get to shoot anymore. So they sort of turned their hobby into uh, their business, their life, uh, and their livelihood. Uh, but it, it, even if they're making decent money and a nice living, you know, it sort of changed for them there. <laughs> okay, this is great, but you know, I don't get to shoot, you know, and I'm busy ordering and working on inventory and tax and all that. And of course I've got a lot of that that I have to deal with, but I get to shoot. And that's the beauty of it. I get to shoot and experiment with different firearms just like we shooters love to do as our hobby, right? So again, it's, uh, I, yeah, man, I am, I am lucky. Uh, sure am. Uh, it's great. And I'm able to bring it to you all. And that's nice. And, you know, to, to, uh, to pay for my good fortune, <laughs> uh, I, I like to share it with you as much as possible. And uh, the interesting firearms we get, and, you know, we even do some firearms, uh, videos of firearms I don't necessarily even like that much but a lot of you want to see them. Now we still get requests for everything under the sun, of course, and even occasionally somebody gets upset. Uh, uh, some sort of naive people, of course. A lot of youngsters watching, which is great, that's what we want, but people just uh, don't quite get the big picture, you know, the world yet, you know, they'll get there, but you know, don't under, I, I've had, it's funny, I've had a couple of three people that there would request some gun I've never heard of, maybe, uh, periodically and then then maybe they'll they'll write me or you'll see the comment from the same person I think it's from the same person and they'll actually be getting mad be getting frustrated you know one guy in particular I remember that uh, was frustrated that I he'd requested this gun review about three times and like what am I why am I not doing it I mean he was really mad you know and uh, so sorry uh, there's only about a million different firearms uh, maybe more and uh, so and we're not trying to just go through every firearm that's ever made. Uh, it really, it turned into more of that than I even expected. I, I was just going to do videos on firearms that, that I own and that I like, that I know about. And, you know, and those are some very common firearms, you know. But, uh, you know, it just sort of evolved into uh, what it is. And we, we do try to meet a lot of requests, and even if it's a firearm I'm not crazy about. But it, it generally, if it's not something I really care about, it, it, it is a firearm that a lot of people care about, you know, or it might be some highly unusual firearm, although I'm not as drawn to those as some people are. Uh, like I've seen a little bit of the Forgotten Weapons uh, channel, but, uh, and I, not enough really to even speak to it, I guess, but I know he does a lot of unusual forgotten <laughs> weapons and that sort of thing. And, and it's great that he does that because I'm not as interested in, in a firearm that, not that everything he does is that, but I'm not as interested in a firearm that is not common at all and never was 
like you go study the Civil War and firearms, and you'll see, man, I didn't know that. Where'd that thing come from? What's that called? You might be at a, a Civil War show, firearm show, which there's one coming up in Franklin, Tennessee, in December. I noticed. I for, almost forgot about it. Put it on my calendar today, and I'm sure I'll see some things again at that show. I attend it every year. That that was used during the Civil War. What is that? It'll be some name and some gun I've never heard of, and you get to talk with somebody about. Yeah, there were. There were only 37 of these made, and there were a few people used it in the South or something. It was made in Birmingham, and it didn't uh, work well, or they couldn't afford to make any more of them, or there were five of them made. That's kind of interesting, but I, I like to start with the most common firearms, and there are so many of those when you go back into history. There are firearms that I'm sure I will like when I get to them. Uh, some of the French for example, uh, I get a lot of requests for the, was it the FAMAS, or how you say it, F-A-M-A-S, I think, to the point where I'm almost not going to do it for that reason. I guess some people are a little obnoxious about that. <laughs> but, you know, firearms that are that were commonly used, I just have not gotten to yet. So I, I want to work my way through those and learn about those, you know, uh, before I pick out some firearm that, you know, there were two of them made or something that, you know, that's, that's just made. How did I get off on all that? I, I did not even mean to talk about that. Oh, well, that's the way it is when you, a professional yacker, yeah, I guess, I don't know. But anyway, we've been messing with some pretty cool firearms. You've seen already the M39. I just posted the, uh, the Mosin, you know, the M39, the Finnish Mosin. Pretty cool gun. I like it. I like that a lot. And uh, puts a whole nother twist on the Mosin, it really does. Uh, sure does. Pretty, pretty cool. I even like the way it comes apart. You know, I, it's funny because after I posted that yesterday, I guess I, someone was asking about what number was on the Tang, and ah, uh, I didn't check that. You know, so I went back out yesterday and took it apart again, and uh, to see what number was on the Tang, all I found was a four. So I don't know if that uh, somebody suggested that meant it was probably made originally in. 04, you know, and then I guess the finish put the 1943 on it, on you know, the barrel. The, anyway, don't know. Anyway, we know it's fairly old, but uh, a nice gun. The Remington Rand video, which we actually did uh, a, while, a while back, but that's a that's a cool gun. And I'm so happy that, that you guys like the uh, old guns. That Because uh, when we started, I've talked about this before, I think, I, I really thought that old revolvers or just revolvers in general uh the old 1911s would not really appeal to people and i had some of those uh, several and would like to have done videos with them uh at the time i was thinking that yeah i guess nobody really cares that much about these some of these guns but uh they would do a video anyway and i was really pleasantly surprised early on that the first revolver videos we did that wow people seem to be interested in revolvers you know uh, young people and that's what was the surprise that young people seem to be interested in them i figured they would think well it's just an old man's gun that's the old guy in his revolvers is a he's boring old six shooters and that kind of thing and uh but you know people like those uh, and i guess if you're on youtube watching firearms videos that's that's a, even though it's a lot of you, you know, millions, hundreds of thousands, it's still a slice, I guess, we, you know, obviously of, of people. It's a slice of people who own guns that generally really like firearms, I guess, or you wouldn't be looking at videos, right, of them on YouTube, I guess, you know, even five years ago. So if you really like firearms, then I suppose that's, the logic behind that, that you're going to like most firearms. And how can you not like a revolver? Again, even if you don't carry it, it's like a 1911. I know I express a lot of love for the 1911 when I have them out there and shooting them and showing them. Don't really carry them. I have, but so it, it doesn't have to be your primary defensive firearm, does it? You know, it is just a great gun to own, to, uh, to shoot. I mean, most people, are just going to arrange to shoot, right? I mean, that's that's generally the the deal. You know, uh, in a lot of places where you're watching, you, you can't carry a firearm if you want to. Some places where you're watching, you can't even have one in, in your home, or in if you do, you cannot use it for self-defense. How bizarre is that? 
but that's the case because I hear from you. Uh, so again, I'm oriented to you know this country, and, and uh, most of this country is pretty free, and so we have that right and that freedom. And so you know, I, I know I talk about that a lot, but uh, that's my orientation. Um, so anyway, but we've been doing some cool guns, and I uh, hope you've seen some of those. We've got a couple, got one coming up. <laughs> This is, oh boy, I think you might have seen the posting I did on this. I just got this out of the safe again. It's the DP-12 double barrel pump shotgun. So I have fired it, John has fired it, and uh, we're gonna fire a lot more. I'm, I'm not sure about my opinion on, so far it seems okay. It seems pretty well made and uh, a little heavy, especially when you get uh, 14 rounds in it or 16, but uh, it's a booger, I'll have to tell you. You know, when you work, you get it in uh, you know, firing position, you know, with rounds in the chambers, it fires uh, the two barrels uh, uh, alternately. You know, it doesn't fire both of them at once. You know, otherwise you'd be breaking your shoulder every time you pulled the trigger, you know. So it doesn't have two barrels for that purpose. It has two barrels because you work that, you got two, bam, bam just like a semi-automatic. So it's pretty cool, I'll, I'll have to say. Uh, especially for people who like bull pups. I'm still, that's the biggest negative for me. It's a bull pup. <laughs> and uh, they're just a little more awkward to use if you're 6'8", especially. But I tell you, it's an interest that I put a, a, a red dot on it. You gotta have something on it. Uh, well, if you're gonna shoot a slug or you know that kind of thing, you wouldn't really have to have anything on it, I guess. Uh, too much, but it's a shotgun Ugh. and it's got some weight to it. And for that reason, it doesn't kick too badly. No. Sorry, no, I had to put the lamp. By the way, this is my, uh, my. I have a couple of these lamps or three or four. This one belonged to my mother and uh, it belonged to my granddad. My mother grew up with that and she used this lamp in, back in the 1920s to do homework by. Okay, and that's why I wanted that. You know, uh, I uh, I traded my mother out of it. You know, before she passed away, and uh, I gave her another really nice lamp. You know, and uh, and uh, it, and I had talked about it over the years that I'd like to have that. There are little things like that that I wanted. You know, uh, from from mom and, and dad. But anyway, it's kind of neat. We'd light it every now and then uh, on holidays or something. Uh, kind of interesting piece of technology, really, isn't it? Uh, and then when the power goes out, I have three or four of these. I'll, I'll like the things. So anyway, don't want to break it. Uh, what else was I going to talk about? Oh yeah. I posted again on Facebook, uh, about the Tulsa trip for decades, I guess decades. I have heard about the Watermaker, uh, you know, gun show in Tulsa being the biggest gun show in the country. And people who have gone said, be sure you allow two days. It'll take two days to get through it, you know, and everything. So I've always wanted to go, but every time I check the distance to Del Tulsa, it's hard, hard to justify. It's about a 10 hour drive for me. It ends up being 11 hours and you stop or whatever, but a long drive for a gun show, you've got to be a real gun nut, right? To drive to Tulsa for a gun show. And you know, you're talking about a couple of nights in a motel and everything at least, so. But I finally did it. And it was on my bucket list, as I said on Facebook. And I, it was something. If you live anywhere close, uh, you probably already have been to it, but it's, it is kind of the ultimate gun show. Notwithstanding the NRA meetings, of course, or SHOT Show. Uh, but those are a little different, you know. Those are all the new guns that are out there. And uh, I enjoy those too. But the, uh, this is a, just like your gun show down the street that you go to, except on steroids. It, it really is. And I actually made it through it in one day. I planned for two. It opens at 8 and closes at 6 on Saturday. So you've got another, an extra hour on both ends there that you don't have with most gun shows. And... And I wasn't uh, stopping at every table and studying everything at every table either, you know. So, I mean, I can, I can sort of scan, yeah, okay, I know that I'm not really interested in those now. I, I see those at other shows, and so I, I kind of move on. So that enabled me to get through. Now, if you don't get the gun shows very often, you might take two days 
you know, the full time just to get through it. If you amble through and study every table at all, it, it would take two days. It really would. But I realized I was getting, yeah, it was in the mid afternoon and I didn't have too many rows left. And uh, I was kind of on a mission anyway. And, and I, I, I bugged on back on Sunday. So, uh, it, uh, it was kind of a tough choice. I sort of wanted to go back some more on Sunday, but I didn't really need to. And so I avoided another motel stay. So I just came on back and I found the Mauser I was looking for. I was kind of in the market for something, uh, which was a, a, a nicer Mauser, you know, German, one made in Germany. I wanted one that was a BFI or an, uh, an S slash what, 22, 42. One that was actually made in Oberndorf, you know, in Germany my mouths are uh, preferably matching uh, serial numbers as much as possible, as much as I could afford. I wasn't looking for a museum piece. These things have gotten really collectible. They've gotten really uh, uh, expensive and collectible if you've got all matching serial numbers and, and if they're in immaculate shape and all that kind of thing. They're getting crazy expensive. Uh, now, the, the, the ones that are mixed, you know, they're still very, very reasonable and uh, but they're all going up. They, they really are. They're real estate. There's a finite number of them. And, and I found one that's, that's matching. And again, it's not a museum piece, but it's in pretty good shape. And it's 1943. Uh, I've got some pictures I'll post on Facebook of it. But it's just cool. You know, it's, it's another bolt gun. I have a kind of my infatuation with bolt guns continues to grow. <laughs> it gets worse. It's always been uh, strong, but it, I tell you, it's just gotten worse. And, uh, but anyway, this is cool. This one's not been refinished at all. And I've had uh, two experts have looked at this, people who really know. And again, thanks to some help on uh, the, the K98 forum. Uh, uh, I, in fact, one of those people, those guys was there, helped me out, looked it over, in fact. And uh, another person who's an authority had already looked at this, this farm and both confirmed that it has not been refinished. It's the original finish and everything. It's pretty much matching. It's a couple of little negatives, but it's, it's really in nice shape. So it's cool. I just shot it this afternoon, so, and uh, I, I just like it. Uh, you can watch for pictures on, on Facebook. I'm going to post some pictures. So, uh, you know, if, if you ever fired a Mauser, you know, eight millimeter, you know what I'm talking about. It's another fine bolt gun. And of course it's the, the granddaddy of all bolt guns, so to speak, right? It's the ultimate bolt action. You know, we copied it for our uh, Auth3 Springfield. And uh, so many of your hunting rifles today, your modern hunting rifles, they're, they're patterned after this in a lot of ways, some variation of it at, uh, it's just, Mauser got it right, you know, the first time, and uh, just a, a, a great firearm. So pretty cool. You watch for those pictures. I've got some some close-ups of it. But so that was one of the missions I was on, and uh, I wanted to hold it, you know, and and uh, before I picked one up. So nice, nice gun. Uh, what else? What, uh, uh, let's check my time here now. I want this thing to be a 12 gig file. Uh, you know, I should say something about the Paris and the French thing. And uh, what can you say? Sad, sad, sad stuff, isn't it? it uh, it's just sad, you know, that, that there are human beings that are willing to do what some of the human beings are willing to do. Kill people, blow themselves up in order to kill people. And, uh, I, you know, it's uh, and, and one of the things I was going to say about that, too, is I think we have to be careful as shooters and as... Second Amendment advocates, uh, self-defense advocates, uh, human rights advocates. It's really a human right, isn't it? Uh, and not get that too twisted up when something like that happens. It, it, can, it can make us in the shooting community appear a little callous or, or uh, shallow, I think, really. You know, that it is a, it is a firearms uh, self-defense issue in a way, but it, terrorist attacks like that they almost go beyond that to some extent you know people willing to blow themselves up and you too whew, you know it, that's hard to defend against that's uh that's a tough one that's a tough one if somebody really wants to blow you up they probably will do it i mean if they really badly want to just kill you they will probably do it because all they do is surprise you right so so having a firearm is not the answer to everything i mean it's not you know, Jeff Cooper you know, has written about that, you know, uh, about how somebody really has it out for you. 
you're carrying a firearm, uh, it very well might not save you. You know, I mean, you, you just don't want to have enemies. You don't want to have enemies because people can uh, stalk you and get you. Yeah, you know, like you know, think of the presidents that have been shot. You know, uh, people can surprise you and, and get you if they want to. You don't want enemies, and that's a sad thing about the terrorist terrorism issue. You know, you don't have any enemies. Those poor people in that uh, concert had no enemies of those people. You know, obviously or likely, and still they got shot up. You know, they going about their own business, having fun at a concert. Didn't know they were going to be stopping a K-47 rounds or getting blown up that night, you know? So it, it's just so sad, so sad. Uh, granted, it, uh, if a lot of people are armed, that would minimize that kind of thing. Of course, that's not going to happen in France or probably in a European country. And even in this country, it's, you know, you can't carry a firearm into a concert. I don't, I haven't been to a concert for a while, but I don't think you're going to get in the door with a firearm. Especially now, I'm sure the metal detectors are in high use, just like at NFL games and things like that. And of course, if they have good security there, that does make it a, a maybe, maybe a real gun-free zone. You know, and those are the only gun-free zones that make any sense at all, if any of them do, is when you've got incredible security there and you've got great screening to where nobody's going to get in there without, with anything. You know, just like at, at the airport generally. Uh, so, I mean, I'm fairly comfortable if I'm in a federal building, for example. Yeah, I can't take a gun or even a pocket knife in there, but there's a lot of agents in there with guns and nobody can get through the door, you know, and there's guards, armed guards, and that kind of thing. So it's a little different. It's these gun-free zones where it's just against the law to have a gun in here, so don't bring it. You go to jail, but there's nobody there to really protect you, you know, so you're like a school, you know, or a mall or most of those places. You're, you're at the mercy of the people who do have a gun, those people who, for some reason, do not abide by the law because they like to kill people or rob or whatever. So, but anyways, we, our heart goes out to uh, the people in Paris and France and, and just everywhere this crazy stuff happens. You know, it's unbelievable, unbelievable. No easy answers to it. Uh, you know, I mean, there's some political answers, some political uh Solutions, maybe, uh, maybe even uh, uh, some sorts of military uh, engagements. That, well, I don't know. I don't know what all the answers are. When there are people living uh, it really lives of, what would you say, little meaning, no meaning, no, no life, you know, uh, sad life, and they're easily indoctrinated. They have no purpose in life, and somebody presents them with a purpose, you know, some divine purpose. All you have to do is blow people up, you know. That's tough to guard against, really. You almost just have to move away from that. It's hard to fight. So anyway, uh, that's that's some bad stuff. Uh, what else? I was looking through a gun magazine this morning, and uh, I don't buy them as much anymore, but uh, you probably don't either, but... Uh, I ran across some ads, uh, talk about changing the subject, just like me, isn't it? You know, keep track of my time. But uh, if you ever, I think uh, probably we get so used to it, it, it's just what we expect. But I noticed two or three different ads in this magazine where, oh man, well, here's a good example of fire, I guess. <laughs> but uh, somebody holding an AR, uh, some advertisement for a, an AR, whatever, you know, and, and of course, you can't have an advertisement for an AR-15. Have some just regular looking fellow like you or me, if I'm regular, uh, just holding it and, you know, <laughs> looking at it or maybe shooting it on a range or something. Do we ever see those ads? <laughs> I mean, it's funny almost. It's always, uh, it's always some operator looking guy and he's got the beard and, and yeah, usually the sunglasses and the tough look on his face, you know, and aiming that gun and and uh, all kitted up and everything and, and and it's funny of course those are the people we rely on right to protect us I'm not making fun of that I'm glad there are people like that my guess is that person in the ad <laughs> in the photo shoot is just some joker that looks the part you know and and so the advertising uh, marketing people 
that's that that's their plan okay we're gonna let's run some pictures you know we're gonna advertise our gun here what do we want to do well let's see uh, we don't really need to think about that, do we? We, we just want to get the toughest looking customer, the most muscular looking dude that looks like he just stepped out of Afghanistan and still all kitted up and get him a serious look on his face. He's aiming this baby. Hey, people will buy it because everybody wants to be like that guy, right? I mean, I guess that's it. It works. It works or people wouldn't do it, you know. And I mean, I don't mean to make too much fun of it. It's just all, it still strikes me as odd when, when you think about the majority of gun owners, the majority of people who buy even AR-15s, even fully select fire firearms. You know, it's, it's people like you and me. Now, we have a lot of soldiers that watch, so maybe that you <laughs> includes some people like that, you know, kitted up ready for battle tomorrow, okay? And we sure appreciate you doing that in your service. But, but most of us that are buying firearms are or just, you know, average citizens, you know, so it's interesting to me how that seems to be the, 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 what's the, the boilerplate, the pattern, the fallback position that everybody uh, goes to for, for firearms. As I've said before in a video or two, you know, there's nothing necessarily, nothing macho really about firearms, you know, now there are some macho people going to war with them. I hope they're pretty macho hope they're also intelligent, you know, and judicious and, and smart, which most are. Most soldiers I run into are. You know, really, I'm impressed. You know, with 99% of the uh, service people I run into, pretty impressive these days. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, you know, firearms people are, are us, and, and you don't have to be Mr. Macho or Miss Macho, right? Uh, you know, firearms are just a very interesting study. They're a very interesting tool, uh, piece of machinery. They're extremely fun, you know, to shoot. Do I need to tell you that? You know, it's just like throwing darts or shooting a basketball. It's just really addictive. They're just, just wonderful. And the history behind so many of them. Not to mention the defense of our Second Amendment, right? Uh, but... But anyway, I just, I just noticed that. I, I wish that the industry would get away from some of that, maybe, you know. Of course, it's a reflection of us and you know, what we want or what we react to, what works. Yeah, that's marketing. You know, uh, that's the thing, kind of sad, if you watch a lot of TV, particularly some channels, and you watch the ad. I've always been a little bit of a student of advertising. I've always, I, I, I don't, I've always been interested in words that are chosen and how, how uh, the wordsmiths you know, put together a commercial, what they actually say. Uh, it's an interesting study. I used to bring some of that to the classroom. You know, it's the same old deal, like, you know, like uh, oh, you know, they'll just say things like, uh, in most cases, uh, this product has proven to help such, 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 such. Well, you know, in most cases, this product has proven to help not necessarily work, but hell, you know, I mean, there's all, the word choices are always interesting to me. And then, of course, the people that are used in the advertisements and, you know, how we're, we are being man manipulated by the marketing people. We're, now, I'm not saying that as a victim. Oh, I'm a victim. I'm being manipulated. Quit doing that. No, but I mean, they're trying to manipulate us, okay? We're only really manipulated if we allow it to happen. But it's, it's interesting how they're trying to affect us. Manipulate might be too strong a word there. It, it has that victim uh, connotation to it. I'm not a victim. I mean, if I buy something or I take some drug I don't need because I see advertisements or I buy something I don't need or I can't afford, that's on me, right? That's on me. That's my own stupidity or ignorance, uh, lack of self-control. But, uh, but, but it is interesting to kind of analyze you know, the marketing world and, and, and how they do it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's everything, you know, whether it's soap powder, guns, or bananas, you know, you name it, computers. So, uh, pretty interesting study, I think. Uh, but I always notice that when I'm looking at gun magazines, how, how you know, how they, they really want us to feel tactical. You know, there's just no way you can make that tactical enough <laughs> for the advertisements. Uh, speaking of tactical guns, though, I've had a great time the last two or three weeks. Uh, again... It, it's great doing what I do, and as I've said before, you know, if if uh, I get hit by a truck tomorrow, it's been it's been great. 
you know, it's been great. I, it was tough to give up teaching, but now I'm almost three years, two and a half, three years into doing this full time. And uh, while it's busy, 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 and I've always got 49 emails and messages and things I try to get through, and uh, it's worth it. It's just, uh, it's, it's worth it. You know, like I said earlier, it's, it's my hobby come to uh, full time. And so I, I can't complain about that. So it's, it's been great. The last few weeks I've, I've had, uh, for example, a muzzle loader, a favorite muzzle loader, you know, spending an afternoon shooting one of those again. You'll, we'll post that sometime, you know, uh, a bolt action gun or two, what an AR-15, you know, you saw the, the war fighter, uh, that Derek has now, uh, we've got a chapter two on that. We'll post sometime soon too, but, oh, uh, what else? Uh, 1911, you know, uh, uh, double action revolver. Yeah. Just, just cool to go from one gun to the other. Uh, I don't like to do them necessarily the same hour, but you know, one day is just great fun. Oh, a shotgun. We've done some shotgunning with the Benelli again. It's just great to do that one day, and the next day you got muzzle loader out, you know, and reorienting myself to that, you know. So lots of fun, lots of fun. It's uh, it's wonderful. I uh, thank you all again for giving me this job and uh, making it it possible, you know. And and our sponsors, you know, it. Uh, I mean, it's almost a deal where I need to pinch myself because I, you know, nothing's perfect, obviously, but but it's worked out well so far. Again, it could all end tomorrow, uh, but it's been great, and uh, it's worked out well because we're still doing what we want to do, and we think we're on a track we like. I mean, well, we we're on a track we like, okay? <laughs> uh, you know, because we've got sponsorship, but yet it doesn't interfere with uh, our mission, you know. And uh, so that's that's and that's not something everybody can do. If you look around the world. TV, YouTube, whatever shows or channels that you want to look at, uh, how many people can be 99% independent of their sponsorship, you know? And uh, we're we're there, maybe 100% to some extent. I mean, we, you know, I don't know, 100, I guess, nobody's fully, but, you know, partly, but it's by choice, by our plan, you know, we don't take sponsorship, we don't take money from any gun companies, you know, that kind of thing. Again, having sponsorship from a gun store, you know, a gun business, you know, like Bud's, and then an ammo business, like Federal, it it, it doesn't affect the firearms. We're still independent with the firearms, you know. It, you know, if, if I decide I wanted to go on a big binge and compare ammo or something, and I was going to be, become... 10, 10, or 10 Outdoors 9, uh, I'd have a hard time doing that maybe, but I don't want to be 10 Outdoors 9 anytime soon, let me tell you that. <laughs> but you know, doing ammo tests or something, you know, and ballistic stuff, not interested in that for one thing. So so maybe it's, uh, there's a limiting factor there because Federal Premium is a sponsor, but it's really not a limiting factor. I have I've not had any interest in becoming an ammo reviewer, tester, you know. So, uh, yeah, again, if we got, we uh, federal knows that if we have a firearm that uh, we need to check, I don't know, a couple other kinds of rounds in it or something that's really important in that particular gun for some reason, that we'll do that. But by and large, we're just happy to have ammo, ammo range, ammo primarily. So, so it's, it works out well, you know, that that we have uh, sponsorship from companies that no way impact you know what we want to say about a firearm okay buds could couldn't care less whether we like uh, a firearm you know whether it's a high point or a 1911 or a mauser we get from there just anything they don't care and uh that's 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 great that's great they they like us because we give honest reviews you know, it's like federal, and so that's that's the only kinds of people we will have as sponsors. Okay, but anyway, uh, people who can appreciate you know our mission. Yeah, you know, I guess what I could say. But anyway, uh, what I was getting at there is we appreciate your all support, and uh, you know everything that you guys do in terms of helping us out, and we're going to continue to bring you some cool guns. I hope, and uh, you know it's it's just just great to be able to do it, and. Uh, you know, there's so many firearms that that I like that are of totally different styles, 
And I know there's someone out there, someone, there's a lot of someones out there, that your favorite gun is a bolt gun, for example, or an AR, or a Glock, or any kind of polymer pistol, or a shotgun, some kind of new age shotgun like that, or maybe a traditional shotgun. And so I'm very happy shooting all of them and uh, experimenting with all of them. You know, and uh, you can tell whether I like it or not because I tell you what I like about it, and what I don't like about it. But I do, I do like a variety of firearms. I think you have noticed that, right? I try not to exercise firearms bigotry too much. I know I got a little carried away, maybe in the high point video, but uh, you know, sorry about that. <laughs> it's just, it's just that it's the firearm we all like to joke about, right? Uh, we'll belabor that point again. Uh, so I like a lot of firearms and uh, it works out quite well because uh, you like a lot of different firearms. Now, do not, do not get mad at me though for doing, you know, certain kinds of firearms. You know, I know I'm, I'm going to get a Glock out every now and then. Well, you're going to see a Glock video posted here next probably couple of weeks. It's going to be another big Glock video of some sort. Uh, that's just, that's just me. It's my bias. All right. And uh, we still mix in other firearms with it. So again, just because I it's my one of my favorites, doesn't mean we're going to do nothing but Glocks or nothing but ARs. Same with ARs, you know. There's always some people who get on the high horse about AR-15. Oh no, not another AR-15. Well, I'm sorry, but it's the most popular firearm probably in the country. So we're going to you know pick one every now and then and do a video on it, even though we don't do a torture test, you know, of them. But anyway, uh, I try to avoid being a firearms bigot. I try to avoid being a bigot in any way, and I hope you do too. You know, uh, I'm always talking about being a responsible gun owner. You know, there's also that fact that we should be responsible human beings. Not that I'm perfect, but uh, you know, we really are a uh, we setting we set an example, particularly as firearms owners. You know, the spotlight is on us. It's on you. And people know you're a gun owner. And yeah, people are. They tend to judge you just by something you say. And well, I know Ralph over there. He seems like uh, a little racist uh, tendencies to him. He's like a lot of guns, you know. Uh, is that typical of gun owners? You know, you know and of course, the, the narrative of the media, a lot of the media, they would love to paint all gun owners as whatever, racist, bigots, uh, you, you name it. So, uh, you know, be careful of that in, in, uh, in, in any aspect of your life. You know, that's the reason we have trouble in Paris and, and all the other places where someone feels like it's their duty to blow us up or kill us. In, in most cases, I mean, you got your occasional crazy person, but there's a lot of people on this planet that it's their mission to kill you or me because they don't like the way we live. They don't like our religion. Their religion is better than our, you know, I mean, that's the essence of bigotry, you know, intolerance, you know, I mean, I hope that there are not many gun owners that have a lot of that in their systems. Okay. I mean, yeah, we need to, uh, it's bizarre. It's bizarre. Um, now, again, I'm not perfect, but it's one of the things that bothers me the most. I'm sorry, I'm not going to answer the phone. The phone, the clock's ringing, the phone's ringing. <laughs> um, really, uh, people who, who are just intolerant of other people. Um, I just want to kill them if they're intolerant. Sorry, it's an old joke, right? Can't stand intolerance. Uh, no, really. You know, I don't know where it comes from. It comes from arrogance, I still say. A lot of it is arrogance. Who am I to think that my way of life, my religion, my politics are the ultimate answer and yours are stupid. Mine are correct. Mine are right. You're the dummy. I'm the genius. You know, where does that come from? Who am I to, to know that so certainly? Now, I think that I've got a pretty good perspective on things. I am going to think that maybe I've got I don't know, maybe more enlightened views than some people. Yeah, it's natural. You probably feel the same way. You feel like you've, you've got a, a good perspective on things and that too bad some other people don't see what the things the way you do. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure I'm, I, it's the way I think a lot, but I don't just know. I'm 
right and everybody else is wrong. And then to the next level, you know, I am so correct. It's my mission to get rid of those people who don't think the way I do. You know, I mean, man, that is bizarre stuff. That is bizarre stuff. Anyway, let's all be tolerant of each other, except we can't be too tolerant of people who want to take away our what? What's the word? Freedom, right? Second Amendment rights, you know, so live and let live, people. Don't mess with me and my rifles, my firearms, my pistols. I don't hurt anybody. I don't have a mean bone in my body. I, uh, I don't like to step on a bug, right? I don't. Let's, maybe it's a wasp who wants to sting me. Uh, you know, so don't paint me as having violent tendencies because I really, really like firearms. You know, everybody I know who likes firearms that is in the hobby that I run into on a daily basis, uh, friends of mine, longtime friends, uh, they don't have violent tendencies at all. At all. You know, the, the anti gunners, anti-freedom folks they just love to think that uh that violence and firearms are synonymous and of course we know they're not so but anyway we do need to to make sure we're responsible and we're setting a good example and i've been preaching at you too long right so anyway i do appreciate you all uh, watching and i uh, i'm a little nervous with you being in my house here like this uh kind of scary there's a lot of you, and you're all squeezed in here right now. Some of you are pretty ugly. Uh, but uh, anyway, I do expect all of you, all one point, whatever, seven million, I expect all of you to be at the meet and greet tomorrow, okay, in Greenville, Kentucky, at Uncle Lee's. Now, I realize about half of you won't be if I get this posted too late, but uh, hopefully most of you will. Okay. Thanks again. And I will chat at you later. Life is good.